Welcome to the Nurture Her series, where we're supporting Black families before, during, and after birth. I think of my journey, you know, through life and, and where I've been, the places I never thought I'd go. I realize how much more uh, we have learned about childbirth and, and, and what a good birthing uh, experience means. I mean, throughout life, you know, it, 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 what happens in the very beginning is very important and how it ends up. All of that has really played. And one of the things that I personally think about is like my mom had so many firsts that paved the way for me. In the 60s, they walk with Dr. King. My mom was the first black bank teller in High Point and had experiences that allowed me to pull from her resilience and her belief in me. And when I was the only black cheerleader in a high school, my mother sat in the stands so that if someone mistreated me, she was there or I could look to her and I could draw strength from that. And although my brother and I are first generation college, we were able to be first generation college because my mother and my father made a lot of sacrifices. I get so emotional when I think about how fortunate I am to have a child and to have a healthy delivery and everything went well. And then I just think about like my grandmother her being like 80 plus, like that's such a blessing that as a black woman, she gets to be that age. And then her having my mom and then like just seeing my mom go through all that she goes through and just her strength is like a powerful woman. Being that you were a teenage mother, had me at 19 and all the sacrifices that you made to make sure that you hit the marks in your professional career. And then modeling that throughout my entire life, you know, going to college and going to the same college that my mother um, <laughs> had me at, you know, that was a journey for me and myself too, going to that same college and thinking about the experiences that you had as a mom and knowing that um, you didn't have those resources available to assist you. I got pregnant with Lauren when I was a freshman in college. So I had Lauren at 19 and I didn't go to the doctor until I was seven months pregnant because I was in denial until my mother and my father told me that I actually was pregnant. So not only did I not share when I thought I was pregnant, but pretended I wasn't, when there was a lot of stigma attached. After I had more and I stayed out the first semester of my sophomore year, went back that second semester, I didn't come back to school and say, oh my gosh, I just had this beautiful baby. Um, I didn't share that because I felt that I would have been judged for that. Everything that I went through and going through at 37 and being a mom, I couldn't imagine at 19 being a mom and having to hold all that in. People, black women, we kind of keep what happens in our house stays in our house and we don't talk about these types of experiences. And so from knowing about your story, I'm grateful because, you know, there was a space that I felt comfortable to some degree to share things that were going on in my life and to be able to talk and to seek services or come to you if I had a question or someone who you were close with or my grandmother just to have an open door. What a different time it is that we're so much more open. We don't operate in secrecy. You can talk about like having sex, birth control, what your needs are. And because of that, people have access to greater care at much earlier ages. I think I was in my thirties when uh, Melanie was born. I was, I, I was um, a, a young mother too. And you know, back then I had gone into working and they didn't, you know, give like the maternity leave and all the, the things that they have today. And I saw so much. And then I think of what I went through when my first child was still born, you know, and I was in this little small town. I sort of had a, 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 a rough time. And then so I decided when I had my next one, I was gonna go back to the big city where I was from. And I did, and that's where I had my first son, living child, and then I had Melanie. And and I think it it was not as easy, but when I look back on it, you know, it seemed like I enjoyed the journey. 
it's interesting when we talk about journeys because when I'm talking about breastfeeding sometimes and I talk to you about it and how, you know, you did not breastfeed. I did not. <laughs> they're talking about how like work might have been a factor that was involved in uh -huh. you choosing not to breastfeed because there weren't spaces available for you to breastfeed. I... And how now there's, you know, breastfeeding room and lactations room now and that there is mandated that people have to have breaks and times to be able to breastfeed. And so how fortunate we've come in these generations to be able to provide that. It's like a different world, you know, from when I first gave birth. In the fact that we didn't have the time, you know, for our babies, like I didn't have time to nurse. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had to be back on the job. I had to be there in, in full force. They didn't have another black talent in High Point at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to do that and raise my my children too. Even intergenerationally. And so I think it's beautiful because each of us has had like our own moment, our own experience, and that contributes to the unique experience that Noelle is going to have to. How has your motherhood journey impacted those leadership opportunities and roles and the things that you do today? Well, one of the ways I have actually been fortunate as a mom is that as my career increased, my children increased in age because I was living them and I was both a contributor and a consumer at the same time. And so being able to like pour all of that humanity in, mm -hmm. you know, my identity as a mom, a daughter, a sister, a wife at that time, a divorcee at another time, just gave me this incredible like empathy for people you know, when I um, had children, it was six weeks was like the norm. And if you had a C-section, it was eight weeks. In contrast that to now, my place of employment, we give six months to um, new moms in the U.S. So there's one month before the due date, and then there's five months. And women have the option of using their vacation time to tack onto that, to extend that as well. And so, I mean, that's very different. Yes. I think yeah. the other thing we've normalized is that moms have unique needs yeah. and that parents have unique needs. And you don't have to pretend that you don't have children to fit into a norm in order to go up the career ladder. I come from such a powerful line of women and then I get to birth a daughter as my first child. And just to think like, wow, what is she coming to this world to do? You know, just her presence alone is enough and more than enough. And just imagining like how she's going to view us and then me reflecting and seeing myself in her eyes and just thinking that I just hope that I'm like, you know, a good of a role model as they've been to me throughout my entire life. So if I think about the legacy that comes from my mom to me, to you and on to Noel, what an incredible act. I mean, just her very existence is an act of resilience. Yeah. But all of the rich history that she carries with her makes her so much more. Mm -hmm. And so I think we've come such a long way um, that gives value and dignity mm -hmm. in motherhood. Mm -hmm.